does the uh, chewing of the gum bother you? If so, you're going to hate this podcast because I'm going to keep my gum in the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. I'll spit it out. It's actually nicotine gum. I've got, I'm on this nicotine gum kick right now. So I'm, there's not really any healthy nicotine gums out there. This is not a commercial, by the way. This is Ben Greenfield, just in case you're wondering what podcast you're listening to. Uh, not any healthy nicotine gums. Somebody should invent one that's like Stevia or go look up. Uh, there's this company, Simply Gum. You can buy it on Amazon. Somebody should take that kind of approach and make a nicotine gum like that. I'm just saying low hanging fruit from a business opportunity for those of you in the nootropic game. Uh, but anyways, what I'm chewing on is called Habitrol. I had my uh, assistant create like a spreadsheet for me that showed all the chemicals in gum and Habitrol of all the nicotine gums out there has the lowest amount of chemicals and artificial sweeteners. Not perfect, but anyways, that and a nicotine toothpick are kind of my my pick me up choices of late uh anyways let's get into what you're about to discover on today's show because it's pretty cool uh today's interview is with a guy named peter spiegel i'll intro him and everything but he's this crazy uh inventor businessman you know sometimes i get health experts on and sometimes i get folks who are like kind of more in business and he kind of has a foot in both camps and he's invented some cool things some cool gadgets that actually are all over my house you know like water filters and air filters turns out this dude like has invented half this stuff that i own i didn't even know this till i started looking into it i'm like hey i i own a bunch of the stuff this guy invented it's kind of cool now i get to pick his brain for a while so you get to join me in that brain picking but first let's talk about real food real food so i'm going to list for you some of my favorite superfoods that i think everybody should have in their pantry cocoa nibs for the fiber and the potassium, the magnesium, the antioxidants, the huge dopamine rush you get from them, coconut flakes, almonds, especially really good almonds with high amounts of monounsaturated fats and antioxidants like vitamin E and tocopherols, organic honey, grass-fed gelatin for your gut, for your joints, organic white chia seeds, sesame seeds, uh, baby quinoa, not quinoa, but baby quinoa. Uh, it's even crunchier and more flavorful than regular quinoa, cocoa butter, sea salt, even organic rice protein and organic pea protein. Well, you could go out and buy all this stuff, or you could munch it all in one big mouthwatering punch of chocolatey, salty, coconutty goodness because i've managed to pack everything that i just described to you along with a few other fun little ingredients into the brand new gluten-free dairy-free completely clean no artificial sweeteners real food bar that i have created uh, it's now available over at keon these things are flying off the shelves like hotcakes because they're freaking like crack cocaine when you eat them uh, so you go to get keon.com get k-i-o-n.com i don't eat crack cocaine by the way uh, go to get keon.com and grab yourself a box of these or three if you want to save money or six if you have kids who do things like play soccer and tennis and you want to give them clean guilt-free energy check it out the brand new keon bar go to get k-i-o-n.com this podcast is also brought to you by gosha gosha's organic uh paul check introduced me to these folks they make this stuff called odd nova odd nova so what they did was they combined ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine to make this super concentrated blend with seven different what they call adaptogenic botanicals. So what you can do is put a little spoonful of this stuff into like the bottom of a mug of tea that you're going to make, or you can blend it up with pretty much anything that you want, you know, whether that's coffee or all on its own, you can even just eat a quick spoonful. But basically it is phytoplankton, a bunch of bee products, medicinal mushrooms, adaptogenic herbs, medicinal spices, superfoods, and even what they call monoatomic minerals, monoatomic minerals. This is one of those kind of like woo-woo blends that you wonder if you're going to feel it. And man, oh man, this stuff like lights up your brain. It's almost uh, like uh, that nicotine I was talking about earlier, but <laughs> way better for you. Uh, so they have one called Glow. They have one called Clarity. They have one called Energy. I recommend you just go toss a three pack of these into your shopping cart over at Gosha's Organic. They're giving everybody who listens in a 10% discount on all of the Odd Nova formulas, and they really taste good. I'm a, I'm a, uh, a big believer 
in uh, pretty much everything that my friend Paul Check recommends, and he recommended this to me, and I am pleasantly surprised. So Gosha's Organics, uh, here's the URL, G-O-S-H-A-S, Gosha's Organics, Gosha'sOrganics.com. Your coupon code is Ben 10 percent sign. That's Ben one zero, then the percent sign. That'll knock 10 percent off of your purchase from Gosha's Organics. So check them out, Gosha's Organics, G-O-S-H-A-S organics.com. In this episode of the Ben Griffin Fitness Show. This is a major form of air pollution that we unconsciously add in our home. In other words, if you have a gas stove and it's not properly vented, you're adding these volatile organic chemicals to the air. But I think many people would be shocked to know, you know, if you have lead in your water uh, or hexavalent chromium, the best-selling pitcher filters actually won't remove uh, any of that or make your water any safer. So he's an expert in human performance and nutrition. Voted America's top personal trainer and one of the globe's most influential people in health and fitness. His show provides you with everything you need to optimize physical and mental performance. He is Ben Greenfield. Power. Speed. Mobility. Balance. Whatever it is for you that's the natural movement. Get out there. When you look at all the studies done. Studies that have shown the greatest efficacy. All the information you need in one place. Right here. Right now on the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. Hey folks, it's Ben Greenfield, and I remember back when I was 14 years old, I'd just gotten interested in fitness so that I could swing my tennis racket better, and my father brought me to Gart Sports down in Lewiston, Idaho. He bought me a pair of 10-pound dumbbells. Not just any old 10-pound dumbbells, but the kind with the little like lycra coating on them, like the cement dumbbells with the soft lycra coating, uh, because that was my first piece of fitness equipment that I would be able to use. And I, I learned how to do side raises and front raises, and I didn't know how to use them that well, but my favorite exercise would be I'd lie down on my bed, on my stomach, and I would have the dumbbells kind of hanging off the edge of the bed, and I would do kind of like a bed version of a concentration curl. And I was hooked. Whenever we'd walk into Gart Sports, I'd want the new little balance ball or some kind of little, you know, contraption. And my dad or my mom would always buy something for me that I wanted there. But one day I saw this made for TV exercise device. I actually had a little TV that I I snuck into my bedroom because we lived in kind of a strict household and watching TV ad libitum was frowned upon. But I actually snuck an old TV into my closet and I would turn it on at night and I'd watch shows that I probably wasn't supposed to be watching. You know, I remember like X-Files. I would always feel so sneaky watching X-Files when I knew that X-Files wasn't wasn't my parents' favorite TV show, but I'd watch it anyways. And I saw this product one day on an infomercial called the Abflex. The Abflex. And it was basically like this this rocket ship uh, shaped device that you'd kind of like put the pad against your stomach with and you'd pull it in towards you and tighten your stomach and then you'd release it and it was like the spring loaded release then you'd pull it in again and you'd tighten up your stomach and you'd just go and go and go uh, until your stomach was exhausted and you couldn't hold that isometric contraction anymore and kind of work your arms a little bit too almost like a seated row uh, it was called the ab flex well I happen to have the actual inventor of that device, the very first fitness device I ever kind of purchased as one of these made for TV things or as seen on TV things. Uh, and I have this inventor on the show. And oddly enough, it's not because he invented the Abflex. It's because of uh, his, his keen interest in uh, water filtration and home detoxification that we're going to be talking about on today's show as well. But ultimately, what's most interesting to me is that he invented the very first fitness device that I ever 
purchase. His name is Peter Spiegel, and he's a serial entrepreneur. He's founded a ton of different companies, and his products are all over Walmart, Target, Costco, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Home Depot, and Sears, and JCPenney's, and a whole lot more. Uh, but in particular, and most interestingly to me, he invents and develops and manufactures and distributes some products that really enhance human health. He has the 30 second smile electric toothbrush. He has the walk fit orthotics, the light relief FDA cleared pain relief device, as well as systems like the aqua true and the ionic pro and things that can be used to actually clean up your household. So he's got a lot of stuff going as far as his body of knowledge from fitness to health to detoxing and beyond. And it's pretty cool to have a mad, crazy inventor on the show. So Peter, welcome to the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast, man. Well, that is a great introduction, Ben. And uh, thank you for those kind words. And uh, I, uh, I'm very flattered and appreciative that in some small way, I interacted with you uh, in your beginning stages of your fitness career. You are responsible for my first six pack. <laughs> but I, uh, I, in, in all candidness, I have to admit that I did not invent the Abflex product. I did create the advertising for it. I did uh, market it uh, in the United States and all over the world. But that product was actually invented by someone named Martin Vanderhoeven. And at that part in my that stage in my career, which, uh, you know, I have a bad memory for dates, but I do remember when my various product children were born. And that that particular product we launched, I believe it was in 1995. And uh, this uh, inventor, Martin Vanderhoven, um, had invested his entire life savings in developing this uh, Abflex product. He was selling it on QVC, and it was one of the best-selling products on QVC, and he really wanted to reach more people. Uh, and so... Um, you know, I agreed that um, I would create the advertisement and distribute the product. I licensed the product from him and we wound up selling just around 20 million Abflex Jeez. exercise products. Yeah, we sold That's a lot six of stomach million, spaceships. Yeah, six, six million uh, in the U.S. direct to consumer market on TV. We sold another six million at all the big retailers. And then through distributors, we sold another six million uh, internationally. And um, I had been Jeez. involved in direct to consumer advertising since uh, about 1989. And that was the first product I was involved with that did over a hundred million dollars in sales. In fact, by the time all was said and done, uh, Abflex did about three hundred million dollars in sales. Wow around the world and i've always wondered that, how much those those as seen on tv <laughs> fitness devices sell for do they still make it can you still get it uh as far i have not seen an abflex uh device i mean it'd be interesting uh, to search ebay and see if there yeah. are any around i'll hunt it down but, uh, if, well folks are listening in uh, <laughs> just, just go to ben greenfield fitness dot com slash peter that's ben greenfield fitness.com slash peter and i'll put a link to everything we talk about in today's show i'd actually I'd, I'd i'd actually almost buy one if i could find one again just just to have it hanging around the house my wife will kill me if i have another fitness product though so so you also had uh there what was the other ab one that you were involved with yeah. with marketing yeah sure yeah, I think while we're just before we move ahead, I'll just clarify this. You know, in the early parts of my career, I started out by licensing other people's inventions. Mm -hmm. And I had kind of a rule, which is if the product isn't completely done, including the tooling, which is a word that we use uh, when we manufacture products to talk about the actual um, molds that you need to make a product. And like in the case of an Abflex, I think we had 20 sets of these tools and each set was probably 250 or $300,000. So uh, I always uh, had this policy, the product has to be done with tooling. 
And then as I started finding like less finished products like that, I would work with inventors that had patent, patented ideas and prototypes. And then as time kind of evolved, I, I discovered there were a lack of kind of great ideas out there. And then at some point in my career, I think it was around 2003 or four mm -hmm. is when I started inventing and patenting my own products. So I just uh, wanted to clear that up. And in terms of fitness products, I, I, I often tell people that in terms of this direct to consumer advertising, I spent about the first, you could say, decade of my career doing spot toning exercise products. And uh, I, I did the first one I did was Abflex. Then I did a product, a series of products that were all based on the same patent. I did Ab Roller, Ab Sculptor and Ab Coach. And these were all like little cages kind of you could say that you got into that supported your neck and had an arc that helped you do a crunch in the uh in the correct way yeah i know the one you're talking about those are also those are those are littered across the floor of gyms worldwide with most people using them incorrectly uh, and, and kind of just like rocking around on the ground but i know the one you're talking about yeah that product was invented by actually a trainer um and they were all different expressions of that product, a lot of knockoffs, a lot with incorrect geometry, but all the ones that we sold were based on the original patent. Um, that, that may have been, and, and to this day, it may be the best selling spot toning exercise product of all time. Uh, we, we, we ourselves again, sold over 20 million. And then uh, in terms of competitors and people that we gave licenses to, uh, I, I think that there was close to 100 million of that product sold worldwide. Uh, I, I thought after that product, after those ab rollers and ab sculptors, that was it for, for me and abdominal exercise products. But lo and behold, yet another inventor came, with, came to me with another product uh, called uh, Ab Slide, and I, I was really done with spot toning abdominal exercise products. But when I saw that product, I knew, okay, we'll sell another twenty million of those. That that's and that's like the uh, the ab. It's it's very similar, like the ab wheel, right? That you roll out in front it, of you. Yeah, it was an it was an it. What it was was an ab wheel with uh, a spring in it, so that as you rolled forward, you got some uh, assist rolling back. And also, as you know, the thing that makes it difficult to use those ab wheels if you're if you don't have really good core muscles is as you roll forward, there's no resistance and you can just wind up flat on your face. So uh, we we added what we called uh, in marketing terms bi-directional resistance, uh, which really means it had a spring. And uh, that that and we also made that product at that time. Those candy colored IMAX had just come out, so mm -hmm. we made it translucent so you could see inside. We made them candy colored, and uh, that was uh, another great project um, uh, yeah. for us. Sexy candy. Co I, re I remember actually when I was I think it was at Duke University doing my internship <laughs> at the time, and they were studying like abdominal measurements and different ways that one could target the abs. And it turns out that these ab wheels actually elicited one of the greatest uh, EMG contraction for trunk flexion compared to just about any other exercise device you could use on the app. So the things freaking work. I remember I had another client who I was training for Ironman. He didn't have access to a lake or a pool much, and but he would do a copious number of these these ab slides or these, these ab wheel style exercises, which you could argue actually use a lot of the same muscles you use as you're pulling through as you're swimming, right? And you tighten the core and you, and you pull the arm down and you're almost kind of doing that with these with both arms simultaneously. And he actually, he threw down a very respectable swim time at, at Ironman using this same approach. So as, as, uh, I, you probably hate this term, but as gimmicky as a lot of these things kind of look on TV, it's, it's kind of interesting that a lot of them work. And, and obviously I was, I was an enormously ripped teenager. So the abflex did the abflex in my 10 pound 
Lycra dumbbells did the thing for me. So, you, you know, I, I always like to ask a guy like you, though, who who has all these crazy inventions and products that you've been involved with, um, what your own personal environment looks like. Like if I walk through your house, do you have certain things that for you are your must haves? When it comes to optimizing either longevity or health or detoxification, like walk me through what, what your home would look like as far as like the low hanging fruit for you that you found to be really helpful for just life in general when it comes to your health or your fitness. Sure. You know, I, I think the first thing is, is I've had a lifelong interest in health and wellness personally. Uh, so I have a, I have an undergraduate degree in human development. Uh, I studied anatomy and physiology. Uh, I studied alternative medicine uh, in the early 70s uh, before it was popular. I studied acupuncture in England uh, back in 1974 before it was even legal to practice in the United States. I taught courses on alternative medicine at the State University of New York uh, in the late 70s. So uh, I've had a great interest in health and wellness and complementary medicine uh, long before it was uh, a popular. And, and as a result of that, you know, I'm very concerned about living a healthy lifestyle. So uh, long before I got involved in manufacturing, inventing and marketing home environment products, air purifiers and water purifiers, I was a passionate consumer of those products. If you talk about my home environment, I mean, the first thing is you look inside of my refrigerator and or in my kitchen cabinets and, you know, you'll see lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains. Uh, I've been uh, a vegetarian uh, my entire adult life since I've been 18 years old. So, I'm, you know, I'm very concerned about, you know, the first thing is, you know, what I put in my body, you know, what I eat. Am I eating, you know, a healthy whole foods diet? I think the second thing is I've always been concerned about the purity of the water I drink. I've had for many, many years before they were popular, uh, under the sink, multi-stage reverse osmosis water purifiers that remove a whole range of chemicals from your water. And we'll be talking about uh more about that later. Yeah, I definitely want to. I definitely want to hit on that. I was at a. I was at a health mastermind recently and learned a ton about water, and uh, the the name of your product came up. So I definitely have some questions to ask you about that. So uh, so go, go go ahead though. By the way, you might catch some flack in the comments section for today's show for uh, for telling people that you've optimized health by being a vegetarian. That's a very polarizing uh, topic these days. This whole idea of whether whether vegetarians get enough fatty acids and, and meat and stuff like that. So I would imagine uh, you, you probably have supplements as well that you take. Well, I think it's, you know, everybody has to find the diet that's right for them. And uh, I'm certainly not advocating a particular diet for everyone. In my particular family history, uh, my father had three heart attacks at 26, 36. He died at 52. His father had a heart attack, died at 52. On my mother's side of the family, my grandfather had quadruple bypass surgery. Everybody in my family had extremely high cholesterol. Um, they were obese. Uh, and so, you know, th there's among, among cardiologists and people who deal with heart disease, there seems to be um, a fairly consistent point of view that started with Dr. Esselstein at the Cleveland Clinic and other people around the country that the best thing you can do if you have a history of heart problems and you have uh, blood lipid problems is to eat a plant-based diet. You know, I'm 64 years old. I have, you know, the perfect uh, blood profile. And so, you know, what I'm doing is work is working for me and other people need to find in terms of diet, what works for them. And I respect people's yeah. choices I'm, in that regards. Yeah, I get it. I actually, I actually have a lot of people I work with who are, who are vegans or vegetarians. And in fact is, I even believe that that is possible, even though I, I like me some meat because it's a convenient way for me to get fatty acids and amino acids and creatine and taurine, and vitamin B and everything in one big 
friendly, tasty dose. Uh, I could, if you were to put me in the middle of a forest with a garden and no bow and arrow and no gun and have me survive on plants, uh, you can do it. You just gotta, you gotta be more careful with, you know, fermenting and soaking and sprouting and, and getting the right amount of nutrients into your diet. And I think that's the problem with, with a lot of these, these plant-based diets is people just freaking eat tofu and rice crackers. Right. And I think that there's a, there's a good way and a bad way to do it. I think if you eat unconsciously, whether you are a paleo person or a plant-based person or a carnivore, whatever it is, um, you know, then you're going to wind up in an unhealthy place. So you, you know, you have to eat whatever diet you're eating. You need to do it with an educated point of view and in a conscious way. Getting back to my house, uh, I'm also, you know, very concerned about the air I breathe. Uh, this has been a long-term concern of mine, but pretty much everybody who owns a home has a central heating and air conditioning system in it. Uh, as a first line of defense, what I do and what I recommend everybody do is change out, you know, your flimsy, pathetic filters that go into your home HVAC for some, you know, very expensive, robust uh, filters that don't impede the airflow very much, but will remove a large amount of the particulate matter from the air. If you go into any of the bedrooms or the common areas, uh, I always have had um, also point of use uh, air purifiers and yeah, actually yeah. After you finish your house walkthrough, I, I have a couple of questions for you about air purifiers too. Yeah, so so I you know my my first line of defense in my home is what I breathe, what I drink, uh, what I eat. Breathe, drink, eat. Now now those are all mitochondrial related, obviously, and mitochondria is a, is a huge affector of longevity and health probably the only missing component when it comes to mitochondria of the things that you've mentioned aside from i guess just physical activity would be uh lighting do you pay attention to this whole new era of like biological lighting or or artificial light mitigation or anything like that it's funny that you bring that up because I i've also been very interested in full spectrum lighting and all the offices that I've had probably for 30 years, I've always gone out of my way to get full spectrum light. Um, you know, we try to have as much natural light as possible in our environment. Can you explain to people when you say full spectrum lighting what you mean? If you look at sunlight, that's considered to be like a benchmark against which other light is uh is measured and they usually use you know the sunlight at a particular time like at noon and and look at what the color spectrum you know what the mix of colors is in that light so a, um, a lot of uh i don't want to call it artificial light but light light that comes from some kind of light bulb or light fixture doesn't have the full spectrum of light that that simulates what's in sunlight. Right, like in, infrared all the way up to near ultraviolet. Yes, yeah, so you you can get all kinds of bulbs, whether they're uh, uh, LED bulbs or uh, fluorescent bulbs or even old-fashioned incandescent bulbs that more accurately represent the full uh, color spectrum. And there's a lot of evidence that that type of lighting uh, is energizing, mood elevating, uh, prevents uh, seasonal affective disorder, is, which is the kind of mood disorders that people get during the winter, especially in places where there's not much sunlight. Uh, so uh, having, having good lighting is also important. And uh, you'll see that, uh, you know, throughout my office um, and my home. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, you know, when it comes to this whole concept of like dirty electricity and EMF, which I guess is like, that's one big consideration for me in my own home. You know, a lot of these these incandescent bulbs are the ones that are often named just like the old school incandescent bulbs is some of the safest when it comes to EMF, particularly, you know, most folks prefer those to LED based, you know, who, who are focusing on like mitigating dirty electricity or high amount of electrical pollution. And from what I understand, a lot of these 
old style incandescent bulbs, they actually do produce a, a decent amount in terms of the actual spectrum. And, and you know, for, for for me, I fill in the gaps right by getting out in the sunshine, and also I've I've got some near infrared bulbs that I use in my office, and that I'll occasionally hang in my sauna to to get both because I have a far infrared sauna, right? So I can get near and far infrared in my sauna. I get out in the sunshine. We have some of these old school incandescent bulbs. I have even though they have some LED on them, a couple of these these juve lights in my office that I use more for like collagen and and you know testosterone therapy and some of the things you can use this this combo near far infrared for. But ultimately, it sounds like you're kind of on on the lighting bandwagon in addition to the air and the and the water and the nutrition and uh, and the movement. Yeah, I think. I forget sometimes, you know, because this has been part of my lifestyle for so long, I don't even think about it anymore. In other words, it's so important to me. It's the first thing I do. I fix it in my office. I fix it in my home. I think the one one area where I can candidly say I'm not an expert on and which I haven't studied very much about is this EMF mitigation and dirty electricity. But I have a friend a very close friend, um, you know, who is very interested in that. And so he, of course, bought me all these little devices and a testing device uh, to uh, test the degree of dirty electricity in all my wall sockets. And then you put in these little boxes and keep measuring it till it goes, you know, below a certain level. So I've got those in my entire house also probably I've fairly large house. And so, uh, I have those plugged into all the, all the sockets and I've mitigated my, uh, EMF dirty energy. Although I can honestly say, I don't really know what it is or what I did. Yeah. I, I had a bit, what's called a building biologist come to my house and do some very similar measurements. And, and probably the, the biggest thing that I found that I needed to add to the house, the lowest hanging fruit was in fact like those dirty electricity style filters, which, which literally just plug into the outlet in my home. So all I did after he left was the very first thing I did was I bought a whole bunch of these dirty electricity filters and I ensure that in every room of the house, anything that's plugged in is plugged into one of these filters. And for, for us, when it comes to, you know, investing $15,000 and painting an entire room with fair Faraday cage paint and Faraday curtains versus just like, you know, spending a minimal amount on the low hanging fruit, like the dirty electricity filters, you know, the latter seemed like the best decision. And and so it sounds like that's something similar to what you did. I'll have to send you though. I actually wrote a book uh, called how to biohack the ultimate healthy home. It's a little, little ebook. Uh, I'll, I'll send it over to you though, because I actually, in part of that book kind of followed around the building biologist with a camera and took all the notes and kind of wrote down everything he recommended. And there's a whole, whole section on there on, on EMF mitigation. Uh, However, I do want to ask you about some of the things that that I know you're you're a particular expert in. Uh, Let's start with air. So... I have a, a couple of questions for you about air filtration systems. Now, you you were behind or involved in the air doctor. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And and I have an air doctor in my – I have one right here. It's two feet from me in my office. It has the negative ion generator. Uh, you would probably do a better job describing it than mm. I. Uh, I also, in the central air filtration uh of my home have a HEPA air filter uh, called an Aller air, uh, which is not a standalone filter. And then finally, because I talk about air filtration sometimes and people send me things, I now have one of these new fangled uh, molecule devices, both the K, the molecule. Uh, and, and I'm curious, specifically when it comes to the air doctor, what what the decision making process was in designing that and, and what it is that goes into an air filtration mechanism like this? Like, why is the air doctor uh, a filter that you would choose to put into your home or, the, or that you you put the design into? Yeah, well, first, I, I have to commend you on your choices and the fact that you put an Aller air uh, into your central air conditioning and uh, heating system is a very, very good, uh, good choice. And uh, it's been a long time since I looked at the Aller Airs, but I I do remember them as being, you know, a good option. Uh, You know, in in terms of air purifiers in general, and now we're talking about portable air purifiers, uh, 
there are two main type of contaminants uh, in, in our air. You could say indoor air pollution. So the first kind is, is the kind that most people normally think about, which is per- particle air, air pollution. Now, a particle could be dust, right? We have dust in the air. Some people have dust allergies. Uh, if you have pets, you could have pet dander in the air. That's also a particle. Uh, there could be pollen in the air during you know, the allergy season. You know, our indoor air isn't completely segregated from our outdoor air because we're constantly opening doors, we're opening windows, and also central HVAC systems, they recirculate usually 30% of outdoor air indoors. So you're constantly bringing things indoors. So you could have uh, dust in the air, you could have pollen in the air. Uh, Hopefully people aren't smoking inside, whether it's cigarettes or other things. Uh, There could be smoke particles. Uh, You could be burning candles, burning food. Off-gassing as well, you know, from a lot of, you know, wood wood products or carpet. Yeah, so now you're moving into the second category. So all the things I've been mentioning, you know, are particulate matter. And, you know, they're – the smaller the particle size, the more dangerous it is to your health. Those are the particles that penetrate deep into your lungs and get into your cardiovascular system and can cause heart disease and stroke. And there's a really terrible statistic out that if you live within a thousand feet uh, of a major road or a freeway, which so many people in cities do, uh, then you're getting much, much more of these fine particles from the exhaust of cars, exhaust of cars uh, coming into your home. You know, then then there's this second area which you just brought up, which is called you know volatile organic chemicals. These are gases, and these gases get into your home, like you mentioned. It could be from uh, synthetic carpeting. It could be from your furniture. Uh, and it could be from a lot of people put laminate flooring in, in, in their homes. So all of those off gases, you know, get into the air and the HEPA filter that you have in your Aller air, or if you have a filter based air purifier in your home, a portable one, they do not remove, uh, these volatile organic compounds or chemicals, which are in a gas form. And this is a major form of air pollution that we unconsciously add in our home. In other words, if you have a gas stove and it's not properly vented, you're adding these volatile organic chemicals to the air. If you use uh, synthetic cleaning products, which most of us use, you're adding these VOCs. If you use perfume, scented candles, deodorant, uh, all of these things are adding these volatile organic chemicals in the air. And that's why the EPA, our own Environmental Protection Agency, says that indoor air pollution can often be up to 100 times more polluted than outdoor air. And in order to remove those chemicals from the air, you need a different type of filter you need an activated carbon filter that, so is that is that different than a hepa yeah hepa hepa is just hepa is a very very dense strainer you could say so uh it, it will remove particles down to very very small sizes but gases like we've just been talking about it goes right through it so what you need in addition to a HEPA filter is a significant carbon filter. And what I mean by significant is some air purifiers that you might buy at Walmart claim that they have a carbon filter, but when you look at it, it's like um, a sheet of paper or a sponge, a little spongy material with some carbon impregnated in it. What you really need is something that's between a half an inch and an half an inch thick that has actual pellets of activated carbon. And that activated carbon will grab 
those volatile organic chemicals and remove them uh, from the air, they'll remove pretty much everything except for one extremely dangerous chemical, and that's formaldehyde. And in order to remove formaldehyde, you need another natural mineral called potassium permanganate, which will interact with the formaldehyde and deactivate it into safe chemicals. Does this, does this one, this Air Doctor, have that potassium filter on it? Yes. Uh, Air Doctor actually has a what we call um, ultra HEPA filter, which is, goes beyond the HEPA standard to remove even the finest particles. It has a large uh, carbon filter in it. And then it also has this uh, potassium permanganate impregnated in there to remove the full spectrum of potential chemicals that you can have in your air. Now, what about the, the, uh, the negative ion button on it? What's that do? Uh, the negative ion button, uh, it does two things. One, it uh, puts a negative charge on particles in your air, which kind of is turbocharges a HEPA filter and makes it even more effective. And also negative ions have been shown in studies to be mood elevating. Yeah, you get, you get them like when you're walking through the forest or along the beach and things like that, right? That's right. Yes, it's just a negatively charged particles in the air that has a positive impact on your mood and also helps HEPA filters trap particles uh, because of the physics of particle charging. Well, howdy, howdy, ho. I want to interrupt today's podcast to tell you about this very, very unique form of fish oil that was recently sent to me, and it's a stress remedy. So it's not just fish oil. What they did, this company called Omax, was they took a triple action CBD fusion supplement, which basically in layman's terms means that they managed to isolate a high amount of CBD and pack it in along with fish oil to this stress remedy that they then added things like uh, theanine, for example, to uh, which you'd find in green tea leaves. And it's just jam packed with these purified amino acids that act as a natural relaxant that stimulate alpha waves in your brain. So you're basically getting your theanine, you're de-stressing, your CBD and your fish oil all at the same time. You need to try this out before bed. It puts your body into the ultimate bliss zone uh, with no THC and no high. Uh, works like gangbusters, though, especially for your deep sleep percentages. So what Omex is doing is they're going to give you 50% off a one-month supply of Stress Remedy plus free shipping and their 60-day money-back guarantee. So here's how to get it. Just go to omaxcbd.com slash greenfield today to take advantage of this incredible savings. You just go to omax, O-M-A-X, C-B-D dot com slash greenfill. That'll automatically give you 50% off a one month supply. This podcast is also brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Every business needs great people and they need a better way to find them. And they don't want to dig through a bunch of paper and crap and resumes on their desk. Who even writes resumes these days? They don't want to dig through a crap ton of LinkedIn profiles. Well, Zip Recruiter makes it easy. They figured out this smarter way to hire people. So they built this platform. It finds a job candidate for you instantly without you actually having to dig through all of this paperwork. In fact, 80% of employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. And then they even spotlight the strongest applications you receive. So you never miss that great match, that employee you could hire, but you missed them. So they wind up flipping burgers at McDonald's when they could have completely changed the face of your business forever. Yeah. ZipRecruiter keeps that from happening. So you can try it for free. You can try ZipRecruiter for free. How? Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash green. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash green. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And it's fun to say, too. Okay, so so basically for a standalone filter that you want to move around your house when the dog takes a crap on the carpet or when there's <laughs> been things in your home that have been off-gassing or you're concerned about someone who's been smoking or the house cleaner came over and, damn it, she used the, the toxic cleaning chemicals that you requested her not to use. Like That's where something like this would come in. But what you're saying is that you have to have two layers of filters along with ideally something like this negative ion generator to actually make it efficacious. Yeah, and the, the negative ion generator is just like a little bit of a turbocharge. So you could say it's a bonus, but the main thing is is to have 
a true HEPA filter or an ultra HEPA filter and to have a big activated carbon filter and to have this potassium permanganate. If you have those three things, you're in great shape. Even if you don't have like a, like a central aller air filter like I have. That's correct. Okay. So I, I know a long time ago when, when I first got this Air Doctor, you guys hooked us up with some kind of a, a discount code or something like that. So I will I will hunt that down again because I actually haven't talked about this filter for a while, uh, even though it's it's literally just been sitting in my office filtering the air for, for freaking ever. So I'll I'll hunt that down. And if you guys go to bengreenfieldfitness.com slash Peter, I'll put the, the Air Doctor link in there if you want to get one of these. Because I think compared to how, – how much does one of these things cost? I don't even know. The- yeah, the it, if you go to Amazon to buy an Air Doctor, it's about just under six hundred dollars, and I think uh, that if you are one of the early people, that uh, we may have given you a fifty percent off link, and since oh yeah, it, it, was, it was like three hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah, with our so link. It, since since you've brought it up, uh, we'll make sure to activate that link for you if it's not active. Uh, I'll speak to our uh, person who handles that, and uh, the people listening to this podcast can get a super great deal on an air doctor, so they better Good. take advantage of it if they're interested. Amazing. Thank you. I actually hadn't planned on talking too much about air filters. Uh, I, I really wanted to focus on water, actually, and the reason for that is this. Um, last week, I was in Utah at a at a health mastermind with a bunch of, of doctors and really people way smarter than me in the room talking about, well, really a a big portion of it was on detoxification and particularly water. And there was this guy there named uh, Robert Slovak. Hopefully he's not, he's not going to be upset that I mentioned he was, he was in the room. Uh, and, And he is, I think he's like 72 years old. The guy looks amazing. We went on a walk and he was, I mean, walking speed is actually one of the things along with grip strength and muscle quality that's most correlated with aging, not muscle quantity, but muscle quality, like how much strength can your muscles produce per unit of fiber. Uh, and then grip strength and then walking speed. And he took off like a shot. This dude walks like a freaking cheetah and he looks like he's 60 years old, not 72, uh, incredibly lucid, incredibly intelligent. And he stood up in front of all of us, uh, all of us folks, uh, you know, doctors and health experts, and he gave about a thirty-minute lecture on water, really advanced water topics, and and he dug deep into a lot of these water systems. And his final slide, he brought up a photo of this thing called the Aqua True. Uh, I don't, I don't even think he's financially affiliated with it or anything like that. He, he just started talking about it and he said that of all these fancy reverse osmosis, under sink, whole house, you know, any filtration system you could get that this tiny little countertop thing that you set next to your sink or on your kitchen counter on your office desk was the best water filtration system hands down. And so I'm on the plane on the ride back from Utah, looking over my notes for this week. And I see that I'm in, in this complete coincidence, I'm interviewing you this week. And I knew that I was going to be interviewing that, you know, a, a, an inventor, an influencer in the whole detoxification department, but didn't realize that you had any affiliation at all with this aqua true system. So now that I have you on, I, I want to take a dive into this thing and, and how it works. Because if a guy like that says that it is the best water system that exists, hands down, uh, my ears perk up. So uh, first of all, I think most people are aware that tap water is pretty crappy and that we have a lot of chemicals added to the water supply intentionally, like you know chlorine and fluoride, for example. Uh, but there are a ton of different water filtration systems out there. And I think people's heads start to spin when it comes to this stuff. So uh, first of all, walk me through the, this Aqua True system and exactly how it works. I don't, we, we've got time, so we can take a deep dive into the science of this. But I want to know what it is about this thing that makes it so special. Well, thank you. You know, first I want to thank Robert. Uh, I have a, a uh, uh, I know I, I've met Robert Slovak. Uh, he's he's kind of a a pioneer and very very respected in the water purification industry. Uh, he and his he and his brother had a company probably twenty five or thirty years ago, and they were the first people to introduce highly effective under the sink water purifiers in the U.S. market. And Robert's kind of a legend uh, in the water purification industry. Yeah, I got that uh, impression based on the fact of uh, there. I won't mention anybody else in the room, but there's a, there's a lot of influential folks who seem to heavily respect what this guy was saying. Yeah, and, and I, I when I met with Robert, 
Uh, you know, this is a guy, you know, you can't outthink or out talk him out talk him about water purifier what, what whatever the limits of knowledge are on water purification uh he's he's really explored them all and and the fact that uh, he's recommending aqua true is a tremendous uh honor for us and i i really appreciate him 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 doing that uh so we can talk a little bit about AquaTrue and where it came from and, and what the benefit is. Uh, I've always felt, as I mentioned earlier, that multi-stage reverse osmosis water purification is the best way to purify your water. A lot what, of what'd you call it? Multi-stage? Multi-stage reverse osmosis water purification. Okay. Uh, and, and a lot of big companies agree with me because if you buy bottled water, the best-selling Bottled water in America is a product called Dasani. It's made by Coca-Cola. The number two water is Aquafina, which is made by Pepsi-Cola. And the number three is called Pure Life, which is made by Nestle. And if you look at the labels of all those products, they all say manufactured using multi-stage reverse osmosis water purification. So when you when you buy commercial bottled water, what you're really buying is municipal tap water that has gone through a filtration process. So we can talk a little bit about what that process is. There's always a pre-filter. The pre-filter is just taking uh, any uh, particulate matter you know, out of the water and also removing uh, simple chemicals like chlorine. Uh, then you go through this filter called reverse osmosis uh, reverse osmosis is a highly technical, complicated uh, physics process uh, that basically removes all inorganic contaminants from your water. And we can talk a little bit about what inorganic chemicals are, but I'll give you the big ones. Lead, for example, is an inorganic chemical. Chromium-6 is an inorganic chemical. Uh, arsenic, uh, radium. These are all inorganic chemicals which are commonly found in tap water. And then they, a multi-stage unit will also have a carbon, activated carbon block filter, a very, very high grade activated carbon block filter. And this is to remove the things that we were, similar things to what we were talking about in air, all the volatile organic chemicals from our water. And you'd be surprised we have things in our water like perchlorate, which is uh, a compound uh, that is found in um, uh, rocket fuel. We have products, petroleum products, uh, and uh, other things like that. So you want to remove uh, – and pesticides. All, all these type of chemicals you need to remove with a very, very high grain activated carbon filter. And that's what you should look for in a water purification system. So you can get that in a professionally installed under the sink system. The problem yeah, that's is- That's what I've recommended a lot in the past is to get an under the counter reverse osmosis system and then figure out a way to add minerals back into the water because from what right. I understand, you can get some demineralization. Uh, if, you know, many people prefer to add minerals back into the water. People can add uh, some Celtic sea salt or some natural minerals. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do that um, if, if, if that's Im important to you. Generally speaking, we I'm glad you said Celtic, by the way. That's another thing Robert lectured on was how much salt is laden with toxins and pollutants and metals and very high levels of iron. And one of the brands he actually mentioned was, was Celtic. I guess I've always called it Celtic, but Celtic uh, salt, like added back into the water for minerals. Yeah, we, we, we actually also market a product which we called Perfect Minerals uh, and it's a Jeez, liquid you have everything, min man. It's a liquid mineral drop that comes from the Great Salt Lake, and it has all these ionic minerals and trace minerals in it. What's so that one called? It's called Perfect Minerals. Perfect Minerals. I'll, I'll, I'll hunt it down and, and put it in the show notes. Yeah. So, uh, so 
uh, an under the sink system is a good is a good choice for people. Uh, generally, unless you're really handy, uh, most people aren't. I'm certainly not. Uh, they have to be pre- professionally installed. They have to be professionally maintained. You don't always know when it's time to change the filters. The filters can be expensive, and and there's a another problem with under the sink systems that Robert is really passionate about Robert Slovak, who we were just talking about, which is the under the sink systems have like a pressurized holding tank that fills up uh, uh, the reverse osmosis is a slow process. So the water goes into this pressurized holding tank and that holding tank is a breeding ground yeah. for bacteria. I remember him saying this. That was, that was a huge thing. Was like these systems are good in terms of their filtration, but you get a bunch of bacterial buildup over time in the actual holding tank, which I was not aware of until literally a few days ago. Yeah. So you know, if you have an under the sink system, you have to have it professionally sanitized once a year. And if you don't, uh, and Robert also talks about this you can really cause dysbiosis, which just means imbalance in the microbiome in your gut as a result of drinking reverse osmosis water from a dirty water tank. I think so, you, can, you can clean it yourself, though. I think you said you can clean it yourself if you have a SteriPen. So you, you can yeah. like buy a SteriPen and do your own maintenance on an under-the-counter system if you wanted to go that route. Yeah, I'm not sure what he means by a steripen. The the way that is I should I should have had him on the show too. Yeah, Maybe I the, will. The way that you generally clean them is you have to uh, basically take the tube that goes into that tank and disengage it, and then understand how big your tank is. Usually they're two and a half or three gallons, and then you have to add bleach, chlor you know chlorine bleach, and a sufficient amount to that tank you know you fill it up with bleach and water and then you let it stand yeah, for now that, that, that sounds that sounds exhausting i don't want it's, to do a, it's a big deal yeah. so so uh and the other thing about under the sink water systems that most people don't realize is that they waste 90 percent of the water so uh if you live in a drought area like i do in los angeles and for every gallon of you know water you purify your wasting nine gallons of water, it's not very environmentally friendly. So uh, about seven years ago, now time is flying by, uh, I set my mind out on creating a countertop version of a reverse osmosis water purifier that would work right out of the box without any, in, without any installation or plumbing. You just take it out of the box and start using it. Uh, that would tell you when it's time to change the filters so you always have clean, uh, good working uh, filters and also uh, that you can change the filters yourself. And finally, that would waste much, much less water. And it took uh, many years of research and development. Uh, we have many, many patents filed. And about three years ago, we introduced this uh, AquaTrue water purifier, which is a true multi-stage reverse osmosis water purifier that has all the features uh, that we just talked about. How does uh, how and, does the actual tank stay clean from bacteria? How do you get rid of that issue? Well, well, the great thing is is that it has a tap water tank that is removable. You just go to your sink and fill up that tap water tank with about a gallon of water, and we recommend that once a week you just wash out that tank, which is completely has an opening at the top with just soap and water and it's just like washing your hands right you keep your hands clean during the day by washing your hands with soap and water and we recommend that you do the same thing uh with the with the tap water tank on aquatrum and if from time and to it, time and, and sorry to interrupt but if you were going to add salt to it would you add salt to that basin or would you add salt to the actual water that you're pouring out of it you can, you can, you, the, the AquaTrue is very efficient at removing salt. So you don't want to re- add salt to the tap water tank. If you want to, there's a clean water receptacle that holds about a gallon of water. And then you could add salt to that, or you could just add it to the individual glasses of water that you're drinking. Cool. By the way, you have a great video on your website of how this thing turns Diet Coke into pure clean water. 
I realize it's kind of commercially and gimmicky, but it but it's actually a, a pretty cool display of how well this thing actually works. And you know what's even funnier is I have one out in my garage somewhere in a box, and I <laughs> thought it was just some dumb little water filtration. You know, like those. You know, you get those pitchers and those things. Those, well, actually, talk about that for a second. What about these pitcher filters for the fridge? Yeah, I think you know it's funny that you bring this up, Ben, which is. You know, if you have a water filter or an air purifier sitting in a box in a garage, it's going to be about as effective to you, for you as most people's fitness equipment, whether it's a treadmill or an ab flex, an ab slide, ab roller that's sitting in your garage. I used to tell people, you know, um, you know, they would ask me how effective are these exercise devices? And I'd say, well, they're only as effective as how vigilantly and correctly you use them. So... Uh, if you, if you've got a system and you're not using it, it's not going to do you much good. I get it. So, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, am in a, in a weird situation in which I have well water that, right. that then passes through a bacterial iron filter, a manganese filter. And then also, uh, my, my dad is, well, frankly, he's one of the world's leading experts on structured water filtration systems. And he hooked me up with kind of like this Cadillac of structured water filtration systems that that's also in my home. And so by the time it gets to my shower head and my sink, I think I'm pretty good. But at the same time, if I were ever to have an apartment or a condo or a rental or a home that didn't have a system like that, you know, the, this, this countertop aqua true thing, you know, now that I know that it's not just a, a gimmicky as seen on TV device, it's, it's actually pretty cool. But, but, uh, I interrupted you as you were talking about the water filters, the, the, the pitchers for the, for the refrigerator. You know, p- pitcher filters have a have a place in in the world of commerce. Uh, they're designed to make water uh, taste better, but not necessarily safer. And they only remove simple chemicals like uh, chlorine. But I think many people would be shocked to know uh, that if you, you know, if you have lead in your water uh, or hexavalent chromium. Uh, these pitcher filters, uh, the best-selling pitcher filters, actually won't remove uh, any of that or make your water any safer. So uh, they have uh, very limited uh, in in their purpose and value. What do you think about alkaline water? I'm not an expert in alkaline water. Uh, uh, you know, th- there's uh, generally speaking in the scientific community. Uh, there's a general understanding that water can have a range of mild acidity or mild alkalinity, and it doesn't really have much of an impact on, on your health. Uh, obviously other people uh, feel differently. I know that Robert Slovak, who's quite an expert in this, uh, is not a, does not have much belief in uh, these alkaline water machines, and he explained to me that there's a difference between uh, pH and alkalinity and the potency of that alkalinity. Yeah, uh, yeah, and- it, it is different. And from what I understand, they actually pass the water over metal plates as part of the alkalizing process, and so you actually risk having more metals in your water. I don't know if that's a fact, but that that had been mentioned to me before by I think another water expert on this podcast. You know what the funny thing is, though. I am aware of this. When you add minerals to water, that naturally alkalizes the water. So as long as you've got some way, you know, you talked about Celtic salt. Um, right. You talked about this perfect mineral stuff. There's like, you know, if you go to Amazon, there's any number of different kind of like trace liquid mineral blends and good salts right. that you can get. That naturally alkalizes the water. Yeah. If you take those perfect minerals, we've measured it, it will increase the pH by two. So if you're, you know, if the water is seven, it'll make it nine. If it's six, it'll make it eight. So it's a natural way to create alkaline water by using these ionic minerals. And you just slap this thing in your counter, this Aqua True, and I'm I'm starting to sound like CVS. What's what's it called? CV not CVS. The Q, QVC. Oh, QVC. I'm starting to sound like QVC now. You just slap this thing in your counter next to your sink, and it's good to go. Just fill it up, and and it automatically does all that. That's correct. And in fact, you'll be able to see Aquatru on QVC later this month, I think the mm. third week of August. <laughs> have it for those of you still watching QVC. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. So so you've got this Aquatru system. You have the Air Doctor system. What are you up to now? Is there like some new invention that you're working on? 
Oh, thank you for uh, asking me about that. Let me uh, pause. I think, uh, first of all, we're working on new models of air doctor. So we're coming out with a smaller air doctor and a larger, a larger air doctor. So uh, we're working on that. Uh, in terms of AquaTrue, we're coming out with a Wi-Fi connected version of AquaTrue. Uh, it will allow us to... You better make sure that Wi-Fi can be disabled because I don't let Wi-Fi devices in my home. I know you're probably disappointed to hear that, but it can a absolutely be disabled, uh, and uh, or you can connect it intermittently. So okay. th there's a there's some advantages to the Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, I know there is. I like I I have a Traeger grill, right? And I I connect it to my phone when I put my meat on, and it lets me automatically run my grill from my phone. So I I understand the convenience of Wi-Fi devices, and I don't. I don't own zero Wi-Fi devices because I do understand the convenience, but I do not uh, have anything in my house that doesn't have the ability to at least disable the Wi-Fi. Well, I think I think I think that you must have one of the safest houses in America. It's pretty clean, it's actually. Okay. You know what? I lied. I, I've got an incline treadmill, <laughs> which is amazing. It goes up to forty percent. A Nordic Track incline treadmill. Uh, but I've got it out in my garage. I also have right. a walking treadmill in my office and the walking treadmill in my office, it's all manual. Treadmills are one of the biggest sources of dirty electricity and electrical pollution that you, that's when you get on that big lineup of treadmills at the gym, you're just blasting yourself with Wi-Fi signals. So I actually have the walking treadmill on my desk, but out in the garage, I do have a Nordic incline treadmill and the, the Wi-Fi cannot be disabled on that admittedly. So yeah. well, anyways though, sorry, I interrupted you. So you got this new air doctor. Yeah, so what, one of the reasons that I want to connect uh, AquaTrue is in, in mm -hmm. the future generations of AquaTrue, we're going to build in actual uh, chemical sensors. And, mm -hmm. and the reason I want to do that is I want to be the first – I want AquaTrue to be part of a first line of defense for communities to protect themselves from uh, – uh, you know, horrific episodes like what happened in Flint, Michigan, where entire communities are drinking water contaminated with lead and nobody knew about it uh, for many, many months. And it mm. created this huge health crisis. So once we have these connected aquatrues out there with the sensors in them, we'll know if a community has lead in their water. Uh, you might be shocked to learn uh, that lead contamination has been found in 2,000 municipal water systems in all 50 states, and that lead is only checked for in municipal water systems every four years. No kidding. Yeah. There, the lead has been found in 19,000 locations supplying water to children like schools and daycare centers. So we want to be part of the solution. There's another chemical called chromium-6. Uh, this is the Erin Brockovich chemical that was featured in the movie about her life. Uh, it's now been found in 75% of American tap water. There's a new emerging compounds called PFAs and PFOAs uh, that are extremely hazardous cancer-causing agents. So we want to be able to detect these in AquaTrue uh, track it uh, and and then report it to public health officials. So that's a big big project uh, that I'm working on right now. Uh, so these are these are the things that are um, you know kind of in my focus right now. Uh, just uh, since you asked, I will tell you that you know one of the inventions that I've been involved with in my career is uh, a, an affordable orthotic. Uh, I've sold. I think 20 million pair of WalkFit shoe inserts in my career. And over the last four or five years, I've been working with podiatrists here in Los Angeles uh, to develop the first truly customizable and affordable uh, orthotic. Um, orthotics are interesting to me because uh, I have some hereditary posture uh, challenges that I have to deal with. I found that orthotics are very, very helpful to me, uh, but they're expensive. So we're working on a new product called Superthotics, and 
uh, we'll be introducing uh, that in uh, 2019. So th- that's kind yeah. of uh, orthotics are interesting. Yeah, I, I go back and forth on orthotics because I have custom orthotics that have just melted away knee right. and hip pain during walking and during running. And I have custom orthotics in my bike shoes as well. I have a pair of bike shoes called uh, Rocket 7s, and, and they're like a custom oven molded uh, cycling shoe. But I try to strike a balance between that and when I'm not engaged in impact based sports like running right. or tennis, say, I try to go barefoot. And I was I was actually at a bodywork practitioner and very proud of myself. This was actually just last week in Utah. He told me I had some of the strongest feet he'd ever seen. And my feet are ugly. They're dirty. They have like weird growths on the bottom of them from all the crazy places I walk around the world without wearing shoes. But ultimately, I do have very strong feet. And I think you strike a balance between going barefoot and allowing your your feet, bones, and ligaments to grow strong and springy. And then at the same time, when you're getting engaged in something unnatural, like walking in shoes on concrete or going to a cocktail party or something like that, you uh, you eschew the cowboy boots and high heels and go for like a good shoe with a, with a custom orthotic in it or with an orthotic in it. And I think that's kind of the best of both worlds. I agree. Yeah. Well, we could probably talk about your inventions all day long, but I have to say, um, folks, if you are listening in, if I could choose two of Peter's inventions that I'm most impressed with that I've personally used, one in particular that I need to take out of its box in the garage now, uh, it would be the Air Doctor. Uh, this is the the multi stage HEPA air filter that we or the uh, not the I guess multi stage isn't the correct term but it's like two different filters and then the negative ion generator and you just push a button and it starts. As a matter of fact, here one one second so you see how quiet it is. It's literally two feet away. Just a second. Okay, it's on now, and you can't even hear it. it it's that, that's the awkward or the the air doctor there. That was your that was the best advertisement ever for the air doctor. So the air doctor. They can hear it a little bit now. That's on. And then the uh, and then the AquaTrue water filtration device. Uh, grab those. I will put links for you to get them at, as Peter mentioned, I think pretty dang close to like a 50% discount in the show notes at bengreenfeldfitness.com slash Peter. Uh, and if you care about your air, you care about your water, definitely grab those. I will link to everything else that we talked about too, from full spectrum incandescent bulbs to my biohacking, the healthy home book, uh, to to pretty much everything mentioned, even the good old ab flex, if I can hunt it down, just go to bengreenfieldfitness.com slash Peter, and it'll all be there. Uh, Peter, I want to thank you for coming on the show, for sharing all this stuff with us, man, and for being such a dang cool inventor who's making people living healthy a lot easier. Well, Ben, thank you so much for your time. I think, uh, as your listeners know, you're a very enlightened person. Uh, It sounds like you care deeply and passionately about your own health and wellness and, of course, the people who uh, look to you for uh, information and insights. And uh, it's really been a a great opportunity to talk to you and and share our uh, respective points of view on things. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. And, folks, until next time, I'm Ben Greenfield along with Peter Spiegel signing out from bengreenfieldfitness.com. Have an amazing week. You've been listening to the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. Go to bengreenfieldfitness.com for even more cutting-edge fitness and performance advice.